Hey guys, Casey Ferris here. Thanks for checking out another video of mine here on YouTube. Today, we are talking about compositing one of those little fancy text message pop-up things inside of Fusion. The point of this is not necessarily to teach you exactly how to do this, but to show you a little bit of tools and how to basically kind of do some stuff inside of the Fusion tab of DaVinci Resolve 15. So without further ado, let's get started. Here we have very satisfied person just looking at their phone, texting back. Nice. What's she saying though? Well, we're going to find out right now. If you've never used Fusion before, definitely recommend checking out my Fusion Basics video where I'll go over a lot of kind of the basic layout stuff. But in a nutshell, everything happens down here in the nodes. This is where all of the pieces of the composite kind of get built in a flowchart. Media in is our original footage. Media out is what the viewer is going to see. So everything else happens in between. The first thing I want to do is add the little text message pop-up thing. Then we're going to animate it and track it and all that stuff. But we got to draw it first. You could also just use an image, but let's have some fun. I'm going to click in the nodes panel and hit control space bar and type BG. That's going to bring up a background. And I'm going to make it like, I don't know, bluish. Sweet. And I'm going to hit one to bring that up in my viewer on the left. With my background selected, I'll hit control space bar and type REC. That's going to bring up rectangle and I'll hit enter. So this is going to be our mask for our little text message pop-up thing. I'll adjust maybe the height, bring that down a little bit. And we'll add some corner radius. Yeah, something nice like that. We're going to make this like a little speech bubble thing. And actually what I'm going to do is bring in a reference image so that we can make it look real nice. Yeah. Really cool thing about Fusion is you can just drag and drop an image into the canvas here. And I'll bring it up in the first viewer by hitting one on the keyboard. And this is just a thing I ripped off from the internet. I hold down control and zoom in a little bit. Middle button mouse to drag around. So we're trying to make this. I'm gonna go back to my background, hit two to bring it up in the right. And let's adjust this rectangle a little more. Shoop, something like that. Maybe a little more radius. Yeah, something like that. Now we gotta make this little tail thing. So what I'm gonna do is hit control space bar and type PLY. That's gonna add a polygon mask to my existing mask. And I'm just gonna draw it really big to start with. And we'll just start with three little dots here. And then I'm gonna adjust my handles to look really nice. Yeah, something, something like that. Cool. Then I'm gonna resize it and move this thing around until it's something I'm in like with. It's not exactly the same, but it'll do. I'm also gonna go ahead and cheat this color. Just grab it from here. Perfect. So there's our little text message bubble. There's also another one that's gray. So I'm just gonna select all these nodes and hit Control C, click anywhere else and hit Control V. That's gonna paste this and I'm gonna take this background. I'll also pick that color. So now I have my two bubbles. Things are going pretty well. I'll hit one on this one and two on this one. And there I have my two text bubbles. All right, so now it's time to make some text. I'm gonna click anywhere and hit control space bar, type T-E-X-T, -E and hit down on the keyboard, select text plus. And let's say, let's get food. And I'm gonna take the output of my text and just drag it to the output of the background. And I'll bring up this merge in that second window. There it is. All right, let's adjust our font, which I'm gonna go with Helvetica and size this down a little. And I'm gonna copy and paste that text. It's gonna be the blue one. And I'm gonna drag my text over my background on my gray one. Bring that up in the left viewer. I'm gonna adjust my text color to something like dark, dark gray, and eh, maybe not so dark. Those are okay to start out with. We're gonna do a little bit of fanciness in just a little bit, but that's good for a start. I'm also gonna delete my reference image because I don't need it. And I'm just gonna start by merging my 
gray bubble over my original footage, and I'm going to bring up media out in the second viewer. So now this is just composited over the image, but it's not really placed right. We could adjust that in the merge, but because we're going to do some fanciness in a bit, I'm just going to add a transform node before this merge three. So I'm going to hit control spacebar, type XF, that's for transform, and I'm going to use that to position our conversation here. Something like that. Let's get food. Perfect. I'm going to do the same thing for our blue text message. Same thing. I'll just copy this transform and then shift drag it onto that line to put it in between. And I'll move it down a little bit. Something like that. And real quick, we see that these are both coming from the same side. A text message actually comes from, if it's from other people, it comes from the left side. So we have to flip this bubble without flipping the text. Easy way to do that is just grab this background layer, type control spacebar and type XF again. This puts a transform node in between my background, which is the gray bubble and the text. That means it's only going to affect the gray bubble and not the text. And I'll just go over here to the inspector and just hit flip. And that's going to flip that over so it comes from the other side. So now we have all of this built out. Two things we need to do is probably track this to the footage so it kind of follows the camera. And the other thing is it needs to animate on. So let's start by tracking it. I'm going to bring up my media in, in my second viewer. And with my media in selected, I'm going to hit control space bar and type track. That's going to bring up tracker, planar tracker, and camera tracker. I'm just going to grab planar tracker and hit add. That's going to put a planar tracker node right after my media in. And now it's going to want me to drag an area to track. So let's see what moves around here. This lady's moving around. Her background moves along with the camera. We might be able to get away with just tracking the background. So what I'm going to do is go to the beginning of the clip and just drag a big rectangle around this kind of high contrast bit in the background. For tracker, I'm going to say hybrid point area motion type. Let's just do translation. I don't need anything else. I'm going to set my reference time and I'm going to hit start. I lost the track here at this frame, so I'm just going to back up a little bit and just keep going. There we go. So there's a pretty good track. Follows the basic movement of the camera. And now with my planar tracker selected, I'm going to hit create planar transform. That's going to make a node just out in the middle of nowhere. And this has all our movement information in it. I'm going to shift drag this planar tracker out of the way just so it doesn't have to think about it anymore. It's not connected to anything. First of all, I'm going to hit control C, click somewhere and hit control V. And now I can just shift drag these onto the connections in between the transform and the merge. Now let's bring up media out in our second viewer and see how it goes. There we go. So it's following the motion of the camera. You can also track it to the phone. I feel like she's just shaking the phone around a lot. So this kind of gets the job done without being too wild. Okay, so now we're going to animate these on. And we're just going to do that by animating these transforms. First thing I'm going to do is grab this pivot and actually move this. Shoop. Move the pivot right there at the end of the little tail. And then just kind of adjust for that. I'm going to do the same thing for the blue. Really kind of should have done this beforehand, but whatever. It's going to be good now. And now that pivot is on the edge of each of those little tails. And the reason for that is because that's where it's going to animate from. If we take the size down, that's where it's going to come from. So let's animate these on. I have my transform selected. I'm going to go to... I don't know, frame 10. And right here where it says size, I'm going to click this diamond. That's going to add a keyframe. Then I'm going to go back 10 frames or so and just bring that size all the way down. I'm going to do the same thing for the blue. Let's go to frame 20 because I know that's going to be after. Set a keyframe for my size. 
go up to frame 10, and bring it all the way down. So, let's see what happens. There we go. That's pretty good, we have the basic animation. I'm gonna go into my spline panel and adjust some timing as well as the way these animate on. So I'm gonna deselect my planar transforms. I don't need those. Just need my transforms. And click this button to zoom everything up. First of all, I'm gonna select both of these keyframes and just move them over a bit because I feel like this needs to animate a little faster. So let's try that. Yeah, five frames is pretty good. And then I'm gonna select these last keyframes on each one. What this is is the transform one animation, which goes from zero to 0.6 or so, and the other one from zero to 0.6 or so. I'm gonna select these last keyframes and hit F for flatten, and that's going to flatten out these tangents so that when it zooms up, it kind of eases in. So now that we have those animating, let's go back to our keyframes, and I'm just gonna adjust the timing a little bit. Select those and move them down a little bit. Something like that, maybe. Let's see how that looks. Let's get food. I love you. Let's let her do that. Let's get food. I love you. Aw. She loves him. There you go. That's pretty much our whole composite. Again, this is kind of one of those things that looks really scary, but if you build it kind of piece by piece, it makes a lot of sense. Let's uh, clean up everything a little bit here. These right here, this is just our background with the masks on it that makes the little speech bubble. This is the gray one, and this is the blue one. This gray one has a transform node on it to flip it, then it's merged under some text. That is transformed and scaled and kind of moved to the side. This is also the node that animates it. And then we have the tracking data applied to it. And that's merged over our footage. And the exact same thing is happening with the blue one. It's being merged under the text. It's being transformed and animated. And then it's being added to the tracking information and merged over those two layers. And that's what gets rendered. So there we go, there's our finished composite. I hope that makes sense to you. If you have any questions or comments, leave them in the comments below. If you like this, hit like. And for more videos on the Fusion tab in Resolve, color grading, all sorts of post-production things, make sure to hit that subscribe button. My name again is Casey Ferris. I will catch you next time. Yeah.